buried in this section of Roselawn Cemetery are two Titanic widows. Uh, they both lost their husband on the same night as a result of the disaster and they both died in 1961, one day apart. Hi, I'm Peter McCabe. This is Roselawn Cemetery in the hills above Belfast. And today we're going to take a quick wander around a number of the graves here, the notable personalities and folks who you might have heard of, or perhaps some who you mightn't have heard of. So here lie the cremated remains of the well-known local Unionist politician, David Irvine. He's commemorated here uh, in loving memory of Councillor David W. Irvine, MLA, which is member of the Legislative Assembly. In other words, a member of our local parliament. And he's commemorated here from 1953, when he died on the 8th of January 2007. He's also commemorated here as a devoted husband, father and grandfather, and an architect of peace and inspiration to us all. So David Irvine had been uh, involved in loyalist gangs, and he was imprisoned uh, during the dark days of the Troubles. However, when he was in prison, he amended his ways. He decided to become involved in mainstream politics. On his release from prison then, he became a unionist politician and he was an MLA from 1998 until his death in 2007. And from 2002 until 2007, he was the leader of the, the PUP, the Progressive Unionist Party. Uh, representing loyalist folks from uh, from Northern Ireland. After his death in 2007 then, uh, he, his funeral service was attended by people from the other political uh, um, side of things here in Northern Ireland. Uh, for example, Jerry Adams, uh, the leader of Sinn Féin at the time, he attended his uh, David Irvine's funeral service. So an unlikely there's an unlikely allegiance and a, and a friendship between those two. Here in Roselawn Cemetery then, there are a couple of interesting Doyle graves. Uh, so this headstone here commemorates uh, a beloved father and soulmate to Tina, Eddie Doyle. He died 19th November 2017. At the bottom of the headstone then, you can see this representation of a massive pint of Guinness. And it says, Eddie Doyle drank in Belfast. And then at the base it says, good night and joy be with you all. Those are the words of, out of the Scottish traditional song, also popular in Ireland, The Parting Glass, uh, covered recently by Ed Sheeran. It's the final resting place of Victor Arbuckle, and he um, was the first of more than 300 RUC officers murdered uh, during the dark days of the Troubles. And you can see on his headstone, it says, died 11th October 1969. He was aged only 29 years. Victor Arbuckle was standing beside another police officer at the time of his murder. He was Sergeant uh, Dermot Hurley, who went on a number of years later to be the first Roman Catholic RUC officer uh, murdered during the Troubles. And the two, both Arbuckle and Hurley, were on, on the Shankill Road, and Victor Arbuckle died as a result of disturbances on the Shankill Road on the 11th of October, 1969. After his death, then, his widow, Dorothy. She went on to found a support group for widows with a similar experience. In other words, though supporting those who had also lost uh, loved ones through their service in the RUC. In 1994, when a Chinook helicopter flying from Belfast crashed into the Mull of Kintar, it was major news here in Belfast. On board were 25 senior security personnel from the RUC, the Army, etc. They were going over to a conference in, in Scotland. And flying the helicopter at the time was this man, Flight Lieutenant Jonathan Paul Tapper. He was aged 28 at the time of his death on the 9th of June, 1994. And uh, sadly, each of the 29 people, 25 passengers and four crew were killed when John and Tapper's uh, Chinook helicopter crashed in foggy conditions. In 2011, then the, uh, 
An inquiry found that Jonathan Tapper was responsible and the other crew were responsible for the loss of the helicopter. But a number of years later, uh, they were exonerated and cleared. People know about George Best, uh, he's buried in Roselawn, but a lot of people don't realise that the man who discovered George Best is also buried here, not far from where George is buried. This is the final resting place then of Bob Bishop, and he passed away 13th June 1990. Bob Bishop then, he lived in Bloomdale Street off Bloomfield Avenue here in Belfast, and round the corner was a football club that he used to coach. That was the Boylan Youth Club, as well as working in the shipyard, Harlan Wolf. Bob Bishop was also the scout for Manchester United. They paid him two pound a week and also installed a telephone in his house so that he could report his discoveries over to Old Trafford. This is the man that sent the famous telegram, I think I found you a genius, and the genius was George Best. So as well as George Best, he sent over many other uh, local boys over to Old Trafford for trials. And many of them made the success of their career over in England. Uh, they include Sammy McElroy, David McCreary, and one of his more recent ones was Norman Whiteside. This is the final resting place in Roselawn Cemetery of three victims of what became known as the Shankill Road bombing. Evelyn Bird, she was age 27, her partner Michael Morrison, also age 27, and their daughter Michelle, aged only seven. And it says here, murdered in the Shankill Road bombing, 23rd October 1993. That was one of the more well-known and notorious incidents of the dark day, from the dark days of the, what was known locally as the Troubles. This incident happened when uh, two IRA, in other words, Irish Republican Army, uh, terrorists walked into Brazil's fish shop on the Shankill Road here in Belfast. Uh, they were trying to attack a meeting uh, the, above the shop uh, where members of the UDA, the Ulster Defence Association, were meeting and their bomb detonated prematurely, killing one of them, uh, one member of the UDA and eight totally innocent civilians, including these uh, th me three members of the one family. Also buried here in Roselawn Cemetery is another of the victims, Leanne Murray. So up here in Roselawn Cemetery, there are many folks from a Protestant Unionist background murdered as a result of the Troubles, uh, but there are also a few surprises. So for example, uh, these two gentlemen here uh, died as a result of what became known as the Sean Graham Massacre. Sean Graham Massacre happened on the Ormer Road when uh, so-called loyalist gunmen burst into the, into the bookmakers and shot uh, five uh, guys in their uh, dead, including uh, this guy William, known as Big Willie McManus, and you can see he's commemorated here as murdered, 5th February 1992, age 54. And then here in the neighbouring grave then is Christy Doherty, and he was 52 at the time of his death, and he's commemorated here as died, 5th February 1992. The other people who died as a result of the, the massacre uh, were uh, Jack Duffin, who was age 66, James Kennedy, who was only 15, and Peter McGee, uh, aged 18. And all five victims of the massacre are commemorated at a plaque down at the side of the Sean Graham's bookmakers. Buried in this section of Roselawn Cemetery are two Titanic widows. Uh, they both lost their husband on the same night as a result of the disaster, and they both died in 1961, one day apart. This is the final resting place then here of Susan Chisholm and her husband Roderick. He's commemorated here as Titanic disaster 15th April 1912. He was a member of what was known as the Guarantee Group. Men from Harlan Wolf selected to guarantee the safe passage of Titanic. He'd previously worked on the Olympic as well as Titanic uh, before he died in 1912. So commemorated over here then is another Titanic victim, a man called Artie Frost. And he, like Roderick Chisholm, he had worked on the Olympic and Titanic, and he was another member of the Guarantee Group. His wife, Elizabeth, 
Uh, she died on the 23rd of February 1961. In other words, one day after uh, Susan Chisholm here. This modest family grave here is the most visited grave in the whole of the cemetery, Roselawn, and this is the final resting place of George Best. He was predeceased in 1978 by his beloved mother, Anne, known as Annie, and then when George passed away, he's commemorated here 25th November 2005. And then three years later, his beloved father, Richard, known as Dickie, he passed away. Of course, George Best is best known for his time at Manchester United, including in 1968 was perhaps the, the highlight of his career when he won the Ballon d'Or and the European Cup uh, with Manchester United. He played for a number of clubs, especially in America, after that, but as I say, he's best known for his time at Old Trafford. After his retirement, he was an after-dinner speaker and a football pundit, and he was well known for some of his catchphrases. He summarised his career as he spent a lot of money on fast cars, woman booze, and the rest he just squandered or wasted. And he said he often went missing. So for example, Miss Ireland, Miss UK, Miss Norway, Miss Sweden. So George uh, was as well known for his off the field activities as his on field activities. Sadly, he had a, uh, an alcohol issue and despite a liver transplant, then he passed away. He aged only 59 in 2005. So again, this is the final resting place of who some would say, including Pele, was the world's greatest ever footballer, George Best. This is one of two Muslim sections here in Roselawn Cemetery, and it's behind this hedge to separate from the rest of the cemetery. But it just shows you the diversity and interesting people that are buried uh, throughout this cemetery. This is the final resting place uh, of El Meki Baraba. And he passed away on the 12th of April 2015. But it, instead of it saying dying, it says he returned to Allah on that date. And he's also commemorated here as the kebab man. So it turns out then that he owned a kebab shop in County Tyrone, uh, and then he was buried here following his death in April 2015. And at the base then of, of his headstone, it says, forever in our hearts. And then some uh, interesting uh, writing here as well. So again, it just summarizes the, 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 the variety of people uh, buried here in Roselawn Cemetery. So thanks very much for watching today. I think you'll agree that there are a number of very interesting people buried here in Roselawn Cemetery. Uh, but there are many, many others that I haven't had a chance to mention today. If you would be interested, however, in finding out about some of those people, I of course have my handy book here uh, with my grin and grand uh, on the front cover and their final resting place on the back cover. So I do also organise occasional tours here in Roselawn Cemetery. We will call it uh, the final resting places of many uh, people that I haven't mentioned today. If you're interested in purchasing the book or coming along on one of the tours, my um, contact details are on this video.